Okay, so we're about, it's about 4.30 almost, so I think we can go ahead and get started. It looks like quite a few attendees are, are already in attendance. Um, so welcome. Today you'll be hearing from David Wixon, Frank Longabuco, and Dr. Eric Wilson from the College of Golf at Kaiser University. Um, we'll be talking today about the basic pitch shot. So before getting started, please allow me to take care of a little bit of housekeeping information. Today's webinar will be made available for replay by tomorrow afternoon, assuming that we don't have any technical difficulties. We will be placing the, the video and webinar up on our uh, on the College of Golf YouTube channel, and then also at uh, collegeofgolfnews.com if you are interested in checking that out. We'll be happy to answer your questions, so please make sure to ask them in the chat applicate, app, applet located to the right of your screen. You can see it in on the right. And if you are having any te technical difficulties or issues viewing the slides, please attempt to reconnect. All right, so we're very excited to start today's webinar. First, we have Dr. Eric Wilson, who is the campus director at the College of Golf, and he's also a PGA Master Professional in Instruction. Dr. Wilson has been listed by Golf by Just Magazine as one of the best teachers in South Carolina for six years in a row, and has also um, taught over 12,000 hours of classroom teaching. Uh, next is David, w uh, David Wixon. He is a PGA Certified Professional, a graduate of Millersville University of Pennsylvania. Mr. Wixon has over 20 years of professional experience in the golf industry and has a true passion for the game. And lastly, of course, is Frank Longabuco. He's also a PGA certified professional and was elected to the PGA of America in August of 1998. Mr. Longabuco uh, became a certified PGA professional in golf operations in August of 2006 and was additionally certified in instruction in 2011. So today, during today's webinar, you'll hear more about the basic pitch, pitch shot. And here's David Wixon to get us started off on learning more. I am. Hello, Dr. Yeah. Wilson. Hello, Frank. Good. Hello, Good. Kayla and webinar attendees. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We have an exciting webinar here today about the basic pitch shot. We're trying to help you improve your ability to score for those. Uh, I know it's rare for most of our players to miss the green, but I know it happens on occasion. So, you know, we have to have the ability to get up and down from when we missed the green, and uh, let's see if we can help you out with that a little bit today with the basic pitch shot. If you joined us last month, we talked about a chip shot, and so we'll also briefly discuss the differences between the two. So we'll talk about the setup for the basic pitch shot. We'll talk about the, uh, the change in the swing, or the change, I like to refer to it as the change in the motion that you would make. Each swing has a different motion, a putt, slightly different motion than a chip, chip, slightly different motion than a pitch, full swing different than a pitch swing. We will also go over pre-shot preparation, distance regulation, and why it's important to develop the ability to hit quality pitch shots. So if we could go to the next slide, please, Kayla. Now, a common question that we would be asked uh, from a student relative to, you know, a chip shot versus a pitch shot and, you know, players understanding the difference the question that comes up would be, should I chip or should I pitch? And it's real easy. The simple answer is putt when you can. Your first option when you miss a green, you know, if you're in the fairway grass or and there's nothing in front of you, no rough in front of you, no bunker in front of you, and you can roll the ball completely through the hole, that's your best option. Putt the ball when you can. When you can't putt, then chip. But again, a chip, another low running shot, that's going to be your best chance to get the ball close to the hole. Pitch the ball only when necessary. So when you have to carry it over a bunker, you have to carry it over some rough, uh, or you know, if you have to hit it high and land it soft to get it to stop close to the hole, your pitch shot is uh, you know, the final option around the green. And then also you have a lob shot, which we will talk about at maybe another webinar. Now, what is the difference? Well, basically the difference is a chip shot has more ground time than air time. The way to look at it would be approximately one-third of the distance with a chip shot is in the air. The other two-thirds are on the ground. These aren't, you know, these aren't set in stone, but that would be approximate. Whereas a pitch shot has more air time than ground time, so the exact opposite. Two-thirds in the air, one-third on the ground. Let's take a look at an example on that in the next slide. So there you go. On your left-hand side, you can see, uh, you know, you can imagine yourself facing this situation where you've hit a shot, you've come up just short of the green, the flag is in the back, and you have nothing in front of you. 
Now, you could choose to putt this. That would be a, a perfectly viable option, especially if that grass is, is short enough and uh, it's not into the grain, which is also something to consider. However, your next best option would be to hit a chip shot where you land it maybe a couple yards on the green. We generally like to say about a yard onto the green and let it run the rest of the way, and that ball would run all the way back to the hole. And even from that position on the left-hand side, if that, if that flag was over on the left-hand side of the green, again, a chip would still be a viable option. Chip shots can be played with several different clubs, anywhere from a, a six iron. I've seen people even hit chip shots with three, fours, and five irons. Uh, and even all the way up to your sand wedge. It's just a matter of playing it back in your stance and de-lofting it. Um, you know, ultimately you have to find a couple clubs that you feel comfortable hitting these various distance chips with. But anything from, you know, say, let's say a six iron to a pitching wedge is a good option for a chip shot. A pitch shot, so here you see a, a different example where the flag is tucked on the left-hand side of the green and the player has sort of short-sighted himself. He's, on, he's just short of the green, but he's on the left-hand side also. And he's just not going to be able to cut the ball through all of that grass that's in between him and the green. Um, now, a bump and run shot is a possibility, but he would have to land it short of the green. It's going to hit in the fairway length grass. Uh, you're never really sure what kind of bounce it's going to take. If you can get that first bounce onto the green with a chip shot, you have more control over what it's going to do after that. But you take a little bit of a risk if you're hitting it and having that first bounce occur not on the green. So the best option in this particular case would be more of a pitch shot where the player is going to hit the ball up in the air, more air than ground time, it's going to land on the green and not run out as far. It's a softer landing shot. And these would be hit mostly with your sand wedge, lob wedge, occasionally with a pitching wedge. Yes, Frank. Yeah, just thought looking, Dave, at the example of the pitch shot. If you try to chip that shot, it's going to be very difficult to get the ball on the green and hold it. Yes. It's going to run 20 feet past the pin. And because you're fighting that tendency, your chances are you're either going to knock it 20 feet past the pin with the chip shot or you're going to quit on it negative accelerate through the ball and end up leaving it short of the green. Um, but with the pitch shot, you can accelerate through, carry the ball to the green, and not have it roll too far because the loft of the shot will prevent it from rolling 20 feet That's right. past the pitch. Okay. And before we leave this slide, you can also imagine you know, other locations in this example, this same green, where a pitch shot would be the best option. If you can imagine that flag being on the right hand back right hand side of the green and you're just short of the green but on the right hand side of the fairway with that bunker in front of you, now it's obvious that your only possible option, there's no way you can putt it, you can't putt it through the bunker, you can't chip it through the bunker. So in that particular case, that's probably even a better example where you have to pitch the ball. You have to hit a higher shot that carries that bunker and lands on the green. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide and uh, you'll see a real life example of what we're looking at. So here we go. The player on the left is uh, just short of the green. You know, he's got plenty of room. The, the flag is in the back of the green there. And again, could he putt this ball? Yeah, he could absolutely putt this ball, especially with the short grass that he has there. But, you know, it's possible that it's into the grain and, you know, he might have to hit a putt too hard or it could be a little bit bumpy grass and it could get knocked offline very easily. So he's choosing the option of hitting that ball onto the green, about a yard onto the green. You can see it's a low running shot, very simple stroke, uh, very much like a putt, the chip shot, which we went over last time if you were joining us for that webinar. And you can see his landing spot. He's going to land that ball right there just onto the green. And then that ball's going to run the rest of the way back to that flag. The example on the right shows the player, you know, again, could he bump and run this ball? Yes, that's a possible shot with maybe a 7 or an 8 iron. But again, he's risking the ball getting caught up in that rough a little bit and other things going wrong, hitting it too hard and going over the green. So his option in this case is to choose to fly the ball up over that rough, again, have it land on the green, two-thirds carry, and then the rest of the way to the green, the other one-third is going to run out towards the flag. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see the, the ball up in the air uh, along the top of the tree line kind of just above the flag. So, you know, he chose a pitch shot technique. And also notice as we get into the actual motion itself, 
notice the difference in the motion, how with the chip shot, very little lower body motion. And with the pitch shot, you can see he's rotated. We can see his hips have rotated. His shoulders have rotated. And we're going to get into that a little bit more here in a second. And so much of what you're saying about what shot to play depends on your lie. So, and we talked about that last month in the uh, chipping uh, webinar that you have to survey the shot. Start out with surveying the lie. Right. Um, if your ball is in heavy rough, your chances of being able to chip it are slim and none. Yes. And okay. uh, you talked, uh, especially down here in Florida, uh, with uh, the grain and the ball being, you know, how do you figure all this stuff out? Practice. Practice. Get out there and learn a basic technique and then just drop balls all around the green. Just throw 50 balls everywhere, wherever. You know, just throw them. Just stand in the middle of the green and, and just start throwing balls off the green somewhere and wherever they land. Go play them. Okay, next slide, please, Kayla. Okay, so again, uh, you know, I know some of you may not have been with us last month when we did a chip shot, but uh, on the right-hand side of the screen is an example of a chip shot setup with the uh, feet very close together, the ball back in the stance, the shaft leaning forward, and the weight leaning forward, and you're going to create that same forward-leaning shaft and weight-leaning forward at impact, and you're going to create a deal off the club and thus a lower running shot. On the left-hand side of the screen, what we want to focus on today would be the pitch setup. And here you can see wider stance, you know, narrow stance, but wider than a chip, not quite as wide as it would be for a full swing. So let's call that a, you know, a slightly narrow stance. We have a centered ball position. We have a vertical shaft. We have balanced weight, so you're not leaning necessarily uh, too much to the left or too much to the right. Uh, if you're going to make an error, I would prefer that you lean slightly to the left, or I'm sorry, for a right-handed golfer, but lean slightly forward, but not quite as much as you would on a chip shot. And you're going to uh, generally choose a more lofty club. The key thing here is basically what you've done is you've allowed yourself to create a situation where you are going to apply the loft of the club to the ball. In other words, you're not de-lofting the club, and then producing a lower shot. You're using the full loft of the club. So whatever club this is, it's a 56 degree sand wedge. When he hits the ball, it's going to have 56 degrees on it. The guy on the right hitting a chip still might be a 56 degree sand wedge, but when he hits it with that setup, it's more like a 50 degree wedge and it's going to be a more low running shot. And Dave, how much talent does it take to get in the right setup? Uh, zero. Basically, you know, if you can stand and hold a golf club, then there, there shouldn't be any reason why you can't uh, learn to set up in these two different setups for the two, two different types of uh, swings that you're going to make or, or shots that you're going to produce. Okay, next slide. Who is that? I remember him. I remember that guy. He used to be a really great player, wasn't he? That's you number one? He was. Really? So we'll see what happens in the uh, next coming months and years and see if you can ascend back to that level of play. But certainly one of the all-time great short games, uh, great putter, great shipper of the ball, also a great pitcher of the ball, that's Tiger Woods. And so the pitch swing, this is a, you know from an angle that we don't often see, and what I want you to pay attention to is the pitch motion allows for the wrist to hinge and form an L during the backswing so that and we're going to see another a live exa a couple examples of this and even a live example of this uh, pitch motion here in a minute. But uh, as you can see, his lead arm and the shaft halfway back form a letter L, whereas with a chip or a putt, the Y that you form with the arms in the club basically stays intact. There's, with a chip shot, there's maybe a little bit of wrist hinge, but the Y is still basically intact. Here, we've changed that Y into an L. As he goes through, notice the body rotation. So the body rotates through impact more than with a chip shot, depending upon the length of the shot. And then you don't see this in this particular image here, but the wrists are going to re-hinge on the through swing and form another L. And we'll see an example of that here in a second. The other thing I want to really point out here in this particular slide is if you can notice on the right-hand side of the images, the, you know, the fourth picture there, how the club is barely above the ground, and yet the ball is already above Tiger's hands. 
That's an indication that he did not try to help the ball up into the air. He uses the loft of the golf club. That's what gets the ball up into the air. The, the, the worst thing that you can do when you try to hit a pitch shot is try to lift the ball up into the air. You still want to hit down on it, create a forward swing bottom, uh, let the club bottom out and hit the ground. Trust that the loft of the club is going to get the ball up into the air for you. Now, David, on the bottom, for the forward swing bottom, does that happen before? Uh, at the bottom underneath or in front of the golf ball at pitch swing? It's going to happen, as always, with these iron shots in front of the golf ball. So you don't want to hit the ground behind it, no matter what you heard before about trying to help the ball up in the air and, and sticking the club in the ground. Sometimes they talk about trying to hit a, a pitch shot like a bunker shot. Intentional fat shot. Right, shot. right. But that's not standard pitch shot, correct? Yes, that would be a more advanced technique. Again, today we're talking about a basic pitch shot. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. You know, there again, there yeah, there would be situations, especially in the rough, where you maybe try to have the club bottom out behind the ball. Um, but this is a basic pitch shot from a good lie, and, and this is what we want to do. And that you, that shot also you're going to play few and far between. Whereas the basic pitch shot <laughs> you're going to be playing very very often. Right. And those other shots require a lot more practice. So especially for those of us that don't spend a lot of time practicing, you know, we're gonna we gotta have a standby standard pitch shot that we can rely on, you know, when the chips are down and uh, money's on the line and when the chips are down, up. As opposed to the chip shots down. The there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the foundation. foundation. Basic pitch shot. Basic pitch. Okay, next slide. Can I just put one more thing in there? If uh, you know, we're really in the impact zone. We talked about. And that's one of the things that Bobby Clampett talks about repeatedly is that the, as Frank said, the foundation of the golf swing really comes from the pitch shot. If you have a pitch motion, you can build a very good full swing motion on that. Absolutely. Exactly what we're going to look at here in this slide. Uh, you know, again, as you, as you move from a putt to a chip to a pitch, you are getting closer and closer to what your ultimate full swing setup is in terms of how you address the golf ball. You know, your stance is getting a little bit wider. Uh, the shaft is more vertical at address and things of that nature. You're going to be hinging your wrist, the motion during the golf swing. You're going to be rotating your body more. So if you can master this, basically this, you know, waist high to waist high golf swing for a pitch shot, not only are you going to improve your ability to pitch the ball, but ultimately you're helping your golf, full golf swing as well because you'll be swinging the club more on plane and create, creating the correct wrist hinge and all of those good things that happen in a, in a full swing. So here. You know, and this is Dave Fells, which we'll uh, talk about here in a second in more detail. But he's really one of the well-known gurus of the short game, uh, coaches Phil Mickelson on his short game. And here he's, again, making a basic pitch motion. I want you to notice the setup, ball in the center of his stance, you know, narrow stance, but wider than a chip. Notice the uh, hinging of the wrists on the backswing, and especially on the right-hand side where he takes the club a little bit farther trying to hit a little bit longer shot. Notice, the, again, a full wrist hinge, a good 90 degree angle between the lead arm and the shaft, halfway back. And then notice how the wrist re-hinge on the through swing, again, forming an almost 90 degree angle. Notice how the body has rotated, knees, hips, shoulders, and head have all rotated towards the target. And this is what we want in this pitching motion, in addition, in addition to having a good rhythm while we do it in staying in balance. So rhythm is very key as well. OK, next slide, please. Dave Pels. Uh, we use Dave Pels' short game Bible and putting Bible in our short game class here at the College of Golf. He has been studying the short game for close to, what, 40 years on tour. And you know, although you know we're not necessarily uh, aspiring to be tour players, a lot of these numbers apply to the average golfer as well. 65% of your shots on the golf course are taken within 100 yards of the green. If you can learn to putt, to chip, and to pitch, if you can learn to get up and down when you miss a green more more often than you do now, the fact of the matter is your scores are going to get lower. These swings, these motions are easier to make. Then a full swing motion, they're easier to learn, uh, they're easier to master, okay, they'll hold up better under pressure, and you'll be a much better player if you can get the ball up and down more often than you do now. You'll shoot lower scores. And what Dave Fells likes to talk about is, you know, if you don't practice a lot, 
and don't have the uh, ability to get out there and practice all these different yardages and develop the feel for all these different yardages, regulate your distance using a clock type image in the sense that you're going to take for a shorter shot, you're going to take the club back where your arms are about at the 730 position on the clock. And all of these are going to require you to swing through to a full finish, but with the same club, with each of these different swings, 9 o'clock swing where your hands reach the 9 o'clock position, you know, chest high with a full wrist hinge, the 1030 position where your arms are almost as, you know, your arms are as, your hands are as high as your head. Again, full wrist hinge. And then each of these you're going to turn through. Well, with the same club, let's assume that this is a sand wedge, each of those swings is going to produce a different distance shot. So whatever those happen to be, you know, it could be uh, 20 yards with the 730 swing, 40 yards with the 9 o'clock swing, 60 yards with the 1030 swing. You remember those numbers, so when you have a, a yardage or close to that yardage out on the golf course, you know which club to choose and which swing to make. Make these same swings with a pitching wedge, and those yardages are a little bit different. Make those swings with a lob wedge, yardages are a little bit different. Ultimately, what you would have is maybe three or four wedges with each of these three different swings, and you're going to have a total of whatever it is, nine or 12 different basic yardages that you can rely on out on the golf course and, and hit your ball that distance, you know, um, better than maybe you do now just trying to judge it by feel and not practice anymore. Okay? Yeah, most uh, top 100 teachers uh, will agree with the fact that you should keep the same rhythm to the swing don't try and vary it, keep the same rhythm, and then change the length of the swing to produce different yardages. Right. Because it's too difficult to try and control both those factors. That's right. Yeah, same thing with the putt, same thing with the pitch shot, and yeah, absolutely. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, now, how important is this? We talked a little bit about this with the chipping last week. Uh, putting, again, 43% of your score. Uh, the golden eight, Dave Pell talks about the golden eight, that, you know, the distance between two feet and ten feet. Even amateur players, less than two feet, you know, you're going to make almost every putt. Okay, so if you can hit, you know, your lag putts within two feet or your chip shots within two feet, you, you know, you're getting up and down every single time. As you start to get further and further away, your percentage of made putts drops out to about eight feet, you're still at 50-50. Okay, tour players are at 50-50, amateur players maybe slightly more, okay, or, or, or slightly less, obviously, you know, less chance of making. But beyond 10 feet, those numbers start to drop dramatically. So if you can see this from five to 10 feet, now this is a tour, but they're still making 55% of their putts from five to 10 feet. The break-even point on tour is eight feet, where they're exactly 50%. From 10 to 15 feet, look how dramatically that number dropped. It almost went, got cut in half, down to 30%. Add another <laughs> 5 feet to that, it drops it almost in half again. So by the time you're out to 20 to 25 feet, or beyond 25 feet, you're less than 10%, beyond 25 feet, less than 5% chance of making the putt. So what do we do? Well. We hit our pitches closer to the hole. We learn to hit our pitches closer to the hole. We learn to hit them within eight feet. Uh, a great rule of thumb or a great way that I've always practiced, especially with uh, newer students that are just learning this, is to take the flag stick. Flag sticks are typically about six to seven feet uh, long. So, you know, hit a bunch of chips to the hole and see if you can get them within the flag stick length. If you can get them within the flag stick length, you have a good chance, a reasonable chance of making that putt. As you improve, you know, set a goal the next time you go out to practice. Draw, you know, measure a flag stick length from the hole, drop a tee at 6, 9, 12, and 3 o'clock, hit some pitches towards that hole. Out of 20 balls, how many did you get within that 7-foot flag stick? At some point, I guarantee you, you're going to get good enough that you can get almost all 20 balls inside that seven foot distance. At that point, you improve to the point where it's time to set a new goal. So now you set that circle maybe five feet or even three feet and you start over again. You take those same 20 balls and you try to hit the ball now within that three foot circle. The more you do this, the better you get. Okay? 
Okay, you're not going to get it inside the three foot circle every time, but the more you practice that way and have a focus on your practice and a goal, the better you will get. Okay, and now finally, let's go ahead and take a look at a live example. Sure. So as I get started here, I'll give you. Okay, Kayla, are you able to uh, transfer that over yeah. to us? Yeah, I'm changing it over right now. All right, so that should be able to show your screen. Awesome. So what we are looking at here, and I'm sure you all can see this, but this is uh, last year's British Open champion, Darren Clark, hitting a pitch shot. I believe they're practicing at Augusta National, where it's very important to hit good pitch shots. Um, so they're certainly working on that particular shot when they're practicing for the Masters. And, you know, so again, what I want you to notice is he's not set up to hit a chip shot. He's set up to hit a higher lofted shot. The ball is in the middle of his stance. His weight is pretty balanced, maybe leaning slightly to the left, especially with his lower body. The shaft is vertical. Okay, so no forward leaning shaft in the setup for a pitch shot. As he makes the swinging motion, swings the club up, hand, chest high, an L position with his lead arm and the club shaft. This is what we want for a pitch shot. Let those wrists hinge on the backswing. Back down to the ball. Okay. And notice that it, that's not just an arm swing. Notice how the lower body is turning with it very subtly. I'm going to hit the golf ball. The club is bottoming out ahead of where the golf ball was. Okay, so the ball has already slid up the face. It's being lofted by the loft of the club. There again, you see no attempt to lift the ball up. The club is still low. Ball going high. And into the finish position, again, where the wrists are rehinged. And the most important thing for most of us, you amateur players out there, and even for us tour pros that uh, can't hit very good pitches, is make sure to let your lower body, or I'm sorry, your whole body, rotate through with the shot. And you hear the old adage, well, oh, yeah, you, know, you look at your head. You've got to keep your head down. Notice how there's no attempt to keep the head down. Okay, so the body is rotating through with the golf club and as, and as the wrists rehinge. Okay, weight is shifted forward, body has turned, club is rehinged, chest facing the target at this point in the finish. Yeah, and even for such a very short little pitch shot, it looks like he's hitting. Uh, he's made a pretty good turn and weight transfer through, hasn't he? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and again, depending on how hard you're trying to hit this, if it was, if it was a, a very short pitch, even though you want to hit it higher, not as much body motion. The longer the pitch shot, the longer, the more the body motion. Okay. All right, Kayla. If we could, uh, if you want to take over again and go back, and yeah. uh, we be answer any questions that our attendees have this afternoon. There was one That's question then that we had earlier, and Ray wanted to know exactly how far or how wide the pitch shot stance should be. I know we've shown it on pictures but I think it's pretty evident that the stance is wider than a chip shot. Yes. But if you watched him in a pitch shot, you would not expect him to be hitting a full swing driver from that position. And there you go right there, pitch shot setup. So there's really no specific um, distance that a pitch shot stance requires, but it's certainly narrower than a full swing and uh, wider than a chip shot is what I would say. What would you say your standard for a full swing, Dr. Wilson, would be as far as width your feet. 
Generally speaking, the starting point that I use is the shoulder width to the inside of the, of the feet. I, I like that, and if that somehow restricts the, the, uh, the hip turn, then I'll let them narrow it up a bit. And we can see on that picture that that's not much that. inside. Yeah, exactly right. Much inside that. Very good call there, Frank. Great. Um, another question. Um, I hit all my pitch shots fat. How can we? How can I stop this? Hey, if you're hitting your pitch shots fat, meaning that the club is actually striking the, uh, as I like how Tiger likes to say, he says the, uh, the club hit the big ball before the little ball, meaning that it hit planet Earth before it hit the uh, golf ball. So basically your golf club is bottoming out behind the golf ball. Again, typically this is a um, generally a, a, a misconception on the golfer's part in the sense that they believe you know, sometimes consciously, sometimes just subconsciously, that they need to help get the ball up into the air, and so therefore they, in an attempt to have the club bottom out behind the golf ball, they will either leave their weight hanging back on their on their uh, trail side too much, or they will try to release their wrist hinge too early, and all of these things will lead them to having the club bottom out behind the golf ball. The, the key here is to make sure that you know, if anything, favor your weight on the target side in your setup and make sure practice actually hitting the turf. You know, practice without a ball. Maybe even just put a tee on the ground and just practice hitting the turf in line with where your golf ball is going to be and make sure that you are rotating through and don't attempt to lift the golf ball up into the air with, the, with your hand. Uh, let the loft of the club get the ball up into the air. Great. And I think we have time for one last question. Um, one question is, should I get a 64-degree wedge? Um, okay, well, I'll tell you what. If I was a wedge salesman, I would say yes. Uh, if I have a student, I'll put it this way. If you don't practice a lot for some of these pitch shots, these high lofted pitch shots around the green um, where you want to make a minimal change in setup and things of that nature, a 64 degree may be a good investment. What I would prefer is that uh, most players should have probably four wedges. Whatever your pitching wedge is, find out what the loft of the pitching wedge is and then make sure you have probably three other wedges with proper gas. So if I have a 46 degree pitching wedge, I'm going to want maybe a 50 degree gap wedge, a 54 degree sand wedge, and a 58 degree lob wedge. Okay? At that point, you know, you should be able to play most of the shots that you would need to play, these high high pitch shots and lob shots with that 58 degree wedge. Some other players might choose a 60 degree wedge. You might go 46, 52, 56, and 60, something, something like that. All right? But you can learn to hit most of these shots with that 60 degree wedge. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time to practice, you play a golf course that uh, you seem to be hitting, ha having to hit a lot of really super high lob shots, which we didn't cover in this particular webinar, which is a more difficult shot. If you find that you face that shot a lot at your home golf course, you may consider a 64 degree wedge where you wouldn't have to make a, as much of an exaggerated motion to hit that club as high as you would have to do the 60 degree wedge. But you know, I would think for most people, the uh, 60 degree wedge is going to be sufficient. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but that's a, a matter of preference. Uh, we had a, a question from one of our students, Ryan Lord, as to why we keep our feet close together when we're hitting pitch shots. And I think, Ryan, there's a few reasons for that. For me, if our feet are close together, it stops my center of gravity, my spine, from moving around too much, which enables better ball striking. And if I'm not moving around in my center of gravity, I isn't traveling right to left as much as a normal shot. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I would agree with that, that you're not making as, as uh I don't know violence the right word, but you're not making as uh, strong of a weight shift and as strong as a motion. You're not trying to generate power on these shots. 
in a full swing you are, and, and the wider stance makes your body a little bit more stable when you're making more of a violent rotation. So you don't need the wider stance with the pitch shot. It's a much uh, smoother rotation. Right. In the power game, we're trying to move right to left and move into the ball and create power. Absolutely. Uh, for the pitch shot, chip shot, uh, center of gravity, we're not trying to create power. We're trying to create consistency in ball striking and it'll be close together. Our head's moving less, our spine's moving, our body's moving uh, less, and there's less room for error. Right. One last question from Ray, I think uh, David already addressed, was what, is, what degree is the best for the pitch shot? And I think that was answered when you went through the different degrees of loft and the wedges and how to go about that. I just didn't want Ray to think we uh, overlooked his question. Okay. And one thing that we didn't get to cover, you know, we talked about the clock system, and one thing that I do want to make sure everybody understands is that the vast majority of good players that I've known, I've known tour level players, I've known good amateur players, and, and even, you know, uh, higher handicap players that maybe have a decent short game, uh, very few use the mechanical clock system to regulate their distance control. If you have the time, if you don't have time to practice that, you know, ultimately that might be a good way to go about it. But if you do have the time to spend a little bit of time practicing, Generally speaking, I think the players that have the best touch around the green are players that develop feel by simply, you know, you know, seeing the distance. You know, they can see the distance, and you know, just the same as if I took you out onto a, a you know, a field of grass and stood 20 feet from you and asked you to throw a baseball to me, you would throw it exactly to me, and then if I moved, you know, 30 feet away, you would again throw it exactly to me. So. If you can learn to translate that same sense of feel that you have for, you know, throwing a ball, you know, imagine an underhand toss of the ball. You know, go out to your uh, to your uh, short game area and, you know, imagine where you would be for the pitch shot and just toss some balls underhand to that hole. What amount of effort would it take to get it close to the hole and then try to apply that same amount of effort to swing in the golf club? And you'd be surprised how good that will work. And the nice part about uh, the pitch shot, you know, even in your backyard, Go ahead and pitch some uh, shots over a bush in front of you, over the sidewalk. Uh, I like in the house to pitch plastic golf balls into my recliner. There you go. But pitch it up there nice and soft, it stays. And if I get too quick and scull it or hit behind it and chunk it, the same results. Mm -hmm. So that is the nice part about uh, the, the pitch shot. You don't need a lot of room to practice, right. a little space, and uh, just don't pitch at the house. <laughs> one, last, <laughs> one last thing, Tim, if you wouldn't mind, um, we had a question from Greg about where he can view the recorded webinar again and when. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw his question. Yes, Greg. So, Greg, you will be able to view the webinar. Um, if you do a search for on YouTube for the College of Golf channel, you can subscribe there. Or um, definitely follow us on, on Facebook and on Twitter. And we'll have it live on collegeofgolfnews.com. That is the, um, the blog for, for the College of Golf. So it will be live there um, no later than tomorrow afternoon. All right. So I think um, you know, that's pretty much it. So we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us on today's webinar. And as I stated, a copy of the recording will be made available. We'll also send them out via email to everyone who attended as well. So um, you can search for it yourself, or you'll be able to see it via email. So, Thanks so much, and definitely stay, stay tuned for, um, for next, next month's webinar as well. Be sure to check back on the website and on Facebook to, to register. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.